hello, hello, sunshine. If you are looking to stand out in your niche or your industry this year, this video is going to be for you. And I, I want to, I'm going to use a lot of personal examples. One, because that's how I teach in general. And two, because this live, hey, sunshine, really came about from a couple of different conversations that I had yesterday. So oftentimes we think when we want to stand out that we have to be loud, that we have to be bold, that we have to be flashy, that we have to be following what a lot of the big accounts are telling us. We often think that in order to stand out, there's a one right way to do it, right? It goes back to being the loudest, being the first one on the scene, having the best caption, having the best whatever. We think that there is one certain way. And the reason, I'm not going to go real deep into the reasons behind it, but the reason why we think that there's a one right way to do something or maybe like two or three right ways to do something or right ways to be is because in the online space with which let's be really honest is the bulk of how small business solopreneurship new business owners are coming into this space is through social media we're told we're taught we're shown we're yelled at that they there are certain frameworks that we have to fall into, that we have to post consistently, that we have to do all these things that some other bigger account is doing, that some other more popular, um, higher revenue increase, like somebody else who's better than us or further along than us is doing. And that the only way to stand out is to actually follow this perfect framework. And I was having a conversation with a couple of, friend, couple of friends of mine yesterday. We're at different points in our business, different times in business, different revenue amounts that we've brought in in business. And we were having a conversation about basically kind of like plug and play style templates and fitting ourselves and what we do into specific frameworks from other coaches. I am not knocking other coaches. I have learned incredible things from the women that I've worked with, that I work with now. I'm not knocking anybody. That's not my purpose here. But when we think that the right way to stand out or we think that the right way to get seen, to really be understood, is that we have to find a way to fit ourselves into somebody else's mold or framework or stri style, strategy, whatever, it automatically makes us incapable of fully standing out. So I'm going to use my business as an example and one of our friends, one of my friends. So my business is fairly cut and dry, right? I'm a business coach. I'm a business strategist. I do consulting on the side. Pretty cut and dry stuff. There is strategy. There is structure. There is behavior. There is mindset. I can fit my core business model into a lot of different frameworks. It's easy. People understand the value of a business coach. Whereas if you have something that's a little bit more ethereal, a little bit less kind of like hard knowledge, right? More mindset based, more behavior based, more who you are based, which the way I run my business strategy is, but we're going to go with the two different examples here. It can be difficult to take this big, beautiful thing that you do and put it into a specific framework or follow a specific step-by-step -step process. But when you force yourself to do that, when you force yourself to say, okay, well, so-and-so has made it really, really big. They're bringing in millions of dollars. They've got all these clients. They have programs that have hundreds of people in them. Like, they're doing something right. They're doing something absolutely right. And they're selling me this really incredible process that's just like boxed and bowed pretty and here you go, go do the thing. It actually makes it damn near impossible. I'm, I'm specific here with my languaging. Damn near impossible to truly stand out. Now, you can learn from them. You can use pick apart those strategies, those frameworks, and see what works for you. 
But if you are solely focused on really making sure that you adhere to what someone else is telling you, that you adhere to what someone else is doing in their own business, you cannot fully be expressing your own self. And as a personal branded business, which if you are a service provider of some sort, whether that is a coach, um, a consultant, a healer, energy, whatever it is, if you provide a service, not a like product, and even then some products, if you provide a service, you are a personal brand. You are selling you, your magic, your essence, your knowledge distilled down into whatever offer it is, whether it's a hands-off offer where it's just like, here's a course, you get some recordings, here's a template, here's some shit, right? Like, or it's a full one-on-one -on -one package, you are selling who you are. You are selling your values, your morals, what you think is important, your vision, your mission, etc. And to really truly stand out, we've got to put those blinders on, we've got to put those earmuffs on, and we've got to start being ourselves fully in our lives. Fully in our lives. And I think that's one of the things that we often forget about. And I'm, I'm really kind of proud of the coaching industry right now in some parts because this authenticity piece is getting louder and louder and more and more people are talking about the importance of being authentic and showing up as yourself and really talking about the things that matter and being different and blah, blah, blah. So I'm proud of that. I think that's really important. But we're still being sold that with the same languaging across accounts with the same buzzwords, with the same type of graphics, with the same inclusions in our packages, that the authenticity movement, which is important, right? A movement is something that actually changes lives, comes off sounding like a fad, comes off sounding like something that's really trending in 2024, instead of coming off as the important core to being a human being movement that it is. And one of the reasons is because we look at it only through the lens of if I am authentic, quote unquote, if I am authentic, then I make more money. If I am authentic, then people will want to work with me. Whereas I really want you and I challenge you to look at your authenticity across the board, all areas of your life. I had an acupuncture appointment yesterday. Totally unrelated, right? Totally unrelated. Started going to acupuncture for some tightness in my chest that I was feeling that I knew wasn't wholly like physical based, right? I'm a big believer in mind, body, spirit. And I had an appointment yesterday and she was doing some different, um, some different points and things and we had a conversation and I had this visual image come through uh, like this old timey lamp, right? Like an Indiana Jones style, like he's going through the caverns with this golden like gasoline lamp, right? And I got this message of, you don't have to be flashy. I'm loud, I'm boisterous, I am opinionated, is something I've been called many times in my life. I'm assertive, I can be aggressive, People know where I stand on things. That is authentic to me. I'm also really soft and I cry at the drop of a hat and I'm gentle. I'm a gentle soul. My heart is very gentle and soft. And for a long time, there was this juxtaposition of how can I be this gentle, soft girl right? I identify as a woman. How can I be this gentle, soft thing and still be assertive and bold and opinionated and go out there and tell people as it is, right? Like I don't beat around the bush. So oftentimes in, pe in the past, my marketing has, has had this like really kind of warring energy to it. I have come on and been really loud and aggressive with my languaging and really bold and in your face following certain frameworks and certain things and being like, you have to do it this way, rah, 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 rah. 
If you want to dig through my Instagram grid, you can, because I don't delete shit. I rarely archive anything. Like, you can see how my style has changed over the last couple of years. And then there have been times with a reel, for instance, I put out a reel yesterday. It was kind of soft, a little bit more gentle, had a good message, was important, right? Led to us doing this live today, but didn't have such a, like, in-your-face kind of energy, Embracing all of that is actually being even more authentic. Embracing who you truly are in all aspects of your life. I started this out telling you about an acupuncture appointment that I had with no intention of going into that acupuncture appointment being being like, I'm going to figure out something about my business. I went in yesterday thinking like, things are pretty good. I had a weird pinched nerve, going to see if she's going to do anything for that. I have this thing going on in my personal life, see if she can do anything with that. Came out with this whole big realization that as much as I think I am being authentic, and I am, there are still pieces that can change. There are still pieces in my personal life with a volunteer organization that I do that I'm not 100% showing up as myself. And even though that's only a couple hours a month where I'm not fully showing up as myself in my zone of genius, it dampens how I can stand out in my business. It dampens how I can stand out, stand out, excuse me, for myself in my relationships. How I am in one part of my life has a direct connection to how I am in other parts of my life. So I said I was going to give you some practical tips on how to do this. This is not just a diary vlog of Chrissy's life, right? (laughs) Nobody wants that, including myself. So how do you actually stand out? First things first, earmuffs. Blinders, earmuffs, blinders, limit your consumption. And I know that's going to sound like the complete opposite of what you were probably expecting. But when we limit our consumption, we actually start to listen to ourselves more. We actually start to go in and figure out how do we want to show up? What do we want to talk about? What are our values? What is our mission? What is the vision that we're creating? What is this big, beautiful thing we want to do with our lives today? When we're constantly consuming, whether that is social media, whether that is news, whether that is just having like all these different sounds all day long, right? When we're constantly in consumption mode, it's much more difficult to be in creation mode. And if you want to stand out in a saturated industry, you've got to be in creation mode. You have to build that connection to yourself. So step one, earmuffs, blinders, right? Earmuffs, blinders. That's step one. At least limit, at least like put them on every once in a while, right? I want you to limit your consumption so that you can start to build and really grow that connection with yourself. Step two, Build that connection with yourself. Sit down, journal a couple minutes every day if journaling's your thing. What what do I want to create today? What do I want to talk about? How's my energy? How do I want to show up today? Do I feel like I am that really gentle soul? Do I feel like really comfy, cozy, and I just kind of like want to sit back and be a little gentle today? Or am I louder? Am I bolder? Do I want to get out there and be like, this is what you got to do? Or is it somewhere in between? Or is it something totally different? Am I like really goofy today? Do I want to record a couple of reels? Do I want to shoot the shit and talk about my workout this morning? Like, ask yourself, not necessarily what is going to make a sale. What is in the calendar for today? But what do I want to talk about today? How do I want to show up? How can I be of service to myself today while also being of service to my community, to my relationship, to my health, whatever that may be? 
That's journaling. The same thing can be done even if journaling is not your go-to jam. I have a huge love of intuitive movement. Put on some music, move your body, let it go with whatever it's feeling. If you don't have the words and you're like, I don't know. I have not a single clue what I want to talk about today. Chrissy, thanks. That was useless. Okay, that's fine. Put on some music and move your ass around your living room. See what happens. Again, it's going into that creation mode. When we're journaling, when we are meditating, when we sit with ourselves, when we're moving in dance, whether we're working out with a, a fitness video, an exercise, etc., we're in creation mode, right? You're creating a journaling prompt. You're creating written words. You're creating that connection, that relationship with yourself. You're creating a connection to your body. You're creating a connection to the space around you, to the air within your lungs. All of that is creation. So get yourself into something of creation today. Build that relationship with yourself because when you have that relationship with yourself, you can start to be more you in all the different aspects of your life. And then the third tip I have for you today, I could keep going, but I also don't want this to be like a, a 70 minute video. The third tip I have for you today, so we've got earmuffs and blinders. Then we've got actually spending time getting to know ourselves. And the third step is to actually get an accountability partner for this. This is one of the things that I personally have struggled with in the past and I know that I'm not special in this. When I have wanted to make really big changes in my life, because that's what we're doing when we talk about standing out in our industries or our niches, when we talk about really becoming more and more authentic, what we're doing is changing our identity. All of what I've talked about today, all of what I've been talking about for the past couple of weeks really kind of boils down to identity work. Who are we? How do we show up? And when we're doing that differently, we're changing our identities. That shit is hard. Changing your identity is hard. And it's fun and it's amazing and it's beautiful and it's messy as fuck. So get yourself an accountability partner. This can be a, a spouse, a partner, a best friend. This can be a therapist, a coach. I don't know. Find, find the person in your life that you feel safe with, that you can trust. For me personally, this is a couple of friends. We have a standing call every other week. I've got one friend who I talk to almost every single day and I let her know, hey, this is what I'm working on right now. Can you like kind of hold my hand to the fire? Can you check in with me in a couple days and see have I done this thing? Am I taking action on it? Did I actually sit down and journal today? Because it's one thing for me to keep myself accountable. If you've been following me for any amount of time, I can almost guarantee that you've seen my planner. I am a stickler with writing things down. I love a good to-do list so I can check it off and get that dopamine hit. But there's only so much that we can hold ourselves accountable. So find yourself a partner. Find yourself someone who is safe, who is trusted, that you can be vulnerable with because identity work at its core is incredibly vulnerable. And let them know what you're working on, right? I'm going back now to an example I shared a few minutes ago that I volunteer for an amazing organization. Absolutely love them. But I don't show up 100% as my, I don't show up 100% as myself in that space. I dim my power. I dim my intelligence and I kind of go along to be a, a little bit of people pleasing, a little bit of different things. We're not going to get into that here. My commitment today was to actually talk to my husband and be like, I need to make changes with how I show up in these meetings. This is what I'm committing to in my next call next week. I want you to follow up with me as soon as that call is over and ask if I showed up differently. 
I want you to set some time aside and I'll do that. I'm going to put it in my calendar. Can we go over my talking points? Can you be my hype person, right? Can you be my cheerleader before that call? I know that's going to be a moment of a test of my identity shift in my call next week. Will you help me with that? And when we can build those accountability partners, when we can bring those people in and really start to open up, we get more support. Anytime that you are standing out more in any area of your life, right? My example was a a personal example. It wasn't a business related thing because again, how you are in one area is how you are in another area. They have a direct correlation to each other. You want to be authentic in all areas of your life. So we talked about a lot today, talked about why the current common belief of following somebody else's framework or strategy or template or plug and play basically makes it impossible for you to be fully on your own two feet. Like you're literally taking somebody else's work and copying it in part. There's great stuff there. Learn from it. Take what works for you. But don't force yourself to fit somebody else's mold. Don't take this big, beautiful creation that is you. There's only one of you in the 8 billion people in this world. There's one of you. Even if you're a twin, there is one of you. One. Don't force yourself to fit into somebody else's mold. Don't. So we talked about all that and then we talked about three specific tips on how to practically apply this. It's one thing for me to sit here and be like, oh my gosh, you've got to be purely expressed and you've got to be yourself across the board and do, 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 do. It's so easy. It's not. It's not easy at all. Not at all. So the three practical tips we talked about today. First, blind... (laughs) I always get this wrong. Blinders and earmuffs. Blinders and earmuffs. Reduce your consumption. Reduce your consumption so that, tip number two, you can be in that creation mode. You can be in that connection to yourself, building that relationship with who you are and how you are and what you are and all the beautiful pieces of you. And then the third tip is to get an accountability person. Ask them for support. You are incredible. You are strong. You have done hard things. You will continue to be the amazing human being that you are. You will do harder things. I guarantee it. You will. But also it doesn't have to be that hard. You can actually ask for support and get somebody to back you and support you and hype you and cheer you on and all the things. And it's a lot more fun. It's less stressful and it's easier. So, number one, stop, ideally, limit, practically, limit your consumption, grow, cultivate, and build that relationship with yourself through creation, and three, get support. Get support from someone that you trust that you can be vulnerable with. That, that is how you're going to stand out in your industry this year. That is how you're going to stand out in all areas of your life. Because how we are in one is how we are in all. If you have any questions on this, if there is something that you're like, wow, I really wish you had touched on this, but you didn't get there, drop it in the comment box. Send me a DM. We'll chat about it. Maybe I'll do another live about it. If you've got questions about how to practically apply this, or if you're in search of an accountability buddy, DM me, comment, like, let's figure out how I can support you in that, whether it is a paid capacity or an unpaid capacity. Let me know. I want you to stand out in your niche, in your industry, in your life this year. You are incredibly strong. You are the light at the end of the tunnel that people need to see. I know that it does not matter what you do. I know that if you are here, If you are here with me live, which I love, hi, hello. If you are catching the replay, hi, hello, hello, love it. You are here to be the light in somebody's world. And you need to be seen for that. So any questions, any comments, drop them in the box. Send me a DM at any point and we'll take it from there. 
Otherwise, go out today, limit consumption, increase your creation, and find that partner. I will talk to you later.